Have you ever wondered what goes on beyond the gates? What happens in the private lives of the people behind the closed doors and shuttered windows? The visitor sees behind those windows and the gates. The visitor walks down a lonely country road to find that men and women sometimes build their lives around a secret and would suffer anything themselves rather than have it bared. Often they are protecting themselves, or perhaps someone they love. We are about to witness a story of such a secret. Sheriff? Too hot to work today, Joe. No, I don't mind this heat so much as the humidity. That's what gets me. Well, take it easy. That's all you can do a day like this. I wish I could. But somebody's got to work in this town. Good morning, Mrs. Hodges. Hard enough for you? Good morning, Joe. This dreadful humidity. It's not the heat, you know. Uh, have you anything for me today? Yes, ma'am. Oh, good. It's my new astrology chart. <laughs> you needn't laugh, Joe Peters. You just don't understand about things like this. Why, only last night, I had a dream... Oh, I had one myself. I dreamed it got cool. Oh. Well, mine wasn't as nice a dream as that. When you dream it's going to get cool again, you let me know. Maybe your dreams are more reliable than mine. Oh, I hope not, Joe. Oh, I hope not. I'll take those, Joe. Oh, good morning, Mr. Blake. I thought maybe this hot spot got you down. No, the heat doesn't bother me, Joe. Well, strictly speaking, I don't mind the heat myself so much. It's the... I know, the humidity. Yeah, I was going to say that. Hey, you know something, Mr. Blake? You don't look so good. I feel fine, thanks. I suppose it's just your wife being out of town. I'm sorry there's not a letter from her among those. How do you know there isn't? Well, I, I sorted the mail myself this morning, so I couldn't help noticing. I didn't expect a letter from her. I had one a few days ago. Good morning, Walter. Oh, man. Good morning. Do you always jump like that every time a customer comes in? Well, you startled me. You sounded so much like Patricia. It's been a long time since anyone thought I sounded like my sister. Least of all you, Walter. Anyway, even if it was Patricia, why should that startle you? I didn't expect her back yet. When is she coming back? I'm not sure. Walter, I want to know where my sister is. I told you she went to stay with a friend in New York. You didn't tell me which one. Didn't I? Why haven't I heard from her? Why hasn't anybody heard from her? I have. May I see the letter? No, it's too personal. Walter, I believe in speaking my mind. You always have, Nan. And always will, whether you like it or not. Nan, did you come here to quarrel? No. I came to tell you to your face what a lot of people are saying behind it. All right, Nan. You might as well get it off your chest. I intend to. I don't like any of this business, Walter. I don't like the way Patricia went without saying a word to me. I don't like her not writing. And most of all, I don't like the way you're acting. What do you mean by that? You know perfectly well what I mean. 
Now, I can't very well force you to tell me where she is. But if I don't hear from her soon, I'm going to find out why. That's what I mean. None of my business. Nan, we're waiting for you to pick the deal. Oh, sorry. Oh, one <laughs> spade. Lucky Mother isn't here. You know how she believes in signs and things? It's nonsense no matter who believes it. Anyway, as I started to say, Nan, he's your brother-in-law, and I'm the last one to want to make trouble in a family. <laughs> Some families don't have to have tried. This isn't funny, Mary. Spade. You needn't be delicate, Maud. Everyone knows that I didn't approve of Patricia marrying Walter in the first place. Yes, dear, we all know that. But all I was going to say is that everyone's talking about how peculiar he's been acting. If his wife were my sister, I... Well, aren't you going to bid, Fanny? Mm. One note, Trump, I guess. That's a big help. Two spades. Two hearts. Anyway, I'd go right down there and demand the whole story. You can't do that. I'd like to see anyone stop me. Why, I never heard of such a thing. Going off without a word to anyone and not writing, even to her own sister. I mean, you can't bid two hearts. I bid two spades. Oh, well, three hearts then. Pass. Walter's heard from her, Maud. At least he says he has. Have you seen the letter? No. Well, there you are. Partner? Pass. Oh, Fanny. Well, I only bid one note. Oh, never mind, never mind. What do you do, Mary? Pass. Well, I'll play it for three hearts. Probably make a slam. I went to see him yesterday. He wouldn't tell me a thing. I don't mind telling you I'm beginning to be really worried. Oh, I'm sure you're worrying for nothing, Nan. Patricia probably has told Walter not to say where she was going. Ha, <laughs> oh. We don't know much about him, do we? Well, he's been living here for the past ten years. Uh-huh. And what about before he came here? We know just what he's told us, and that's all. He's a nice, quiet man. It's the quiet ones you have to watch out for. Well, I've always liked him. And in the old days, Nan, you seem to like him, too. I never liked him. From the first, I knew there was something wrong with him. But you did invite him over to the house, Nan. Of course, that was before he and Patricia were keeping company. You mean he invited himself. And believe me, when a man like Walter, without any pride, mind you, makes up his mind he's going to come around a lot, it takes some doing to get rid of him. But you managed. Yes, I, I got rid of him. What's the matter, Nan? Nothing, nothing at all. <laughs> You're playing, Oh, forgive me, Walter. I just can't keep up with you. Oh, I give up, Walter. You win again. I'm a fine guest. I accept your invitation for a dinner fit for a king, and then I win every game. Oh, it doesn't matter. Unless the game bores you. Oh, not at all. Maybe we should have gone to the movie. Well, it was just an idea. Oh, it seemed like such a silly movie. Ma told me all about it. A man and a woman who meet on a street corner or something, someplace, and bingo, all of a sudden they're in love. You, you think that's silly, Nana? I thought women were romantic. Smart women are practical, Walter. They know that life doesn't work like that. Oh, I see. A woman realizes that happiness can come from the quiet things, from, well, a, a friendship between two people that in time becomes love. So that's how you think it is, eh? No stranger suddenly coming out of nowhere. That's right, Walter. It's a big lesson to learn. There's no use in waiting. Nobody ever comes out of nowhere. 
You're wrong, Nan. I just came from there. Patricia. Hi, sis. Oh. Hi. Well, what happened to the job? Oh, I got tired of it. You know me. Yes. Walter, this is my little sister, Patricia. She just came back from... from nowhere. Where can I put this for you? Uh, I don't know. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to barge in on you like this. Oh, don't be silly. Put it upstairs in the back room, Walter. Then come on down. We'll make it a three-handed game. Yeah. Nan, you sure you're all right? Oh, oh of course. What? Whose play is it? Yours. It's been yours for a minute. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I can't play anymore. I've been thinking about Patricia and Walter when he first came to this town. He's such an awful person, and we have nothing to go on but his word for everything. Come to think of it, we have only his word for it that Patricia went away at all. No. Anything wrong? Oh, Mother. Well, I've never heard you all so quiet before. Is there anything wrong? No, no. We were just talking about Patricia. Oh. Oh, isn't that odd? You know, I only dreamt about her last night. Yes, I... I dreamt I was out in that lonely place of theirs. And for some reason, I... I had to find her. And I did. I did. Oh, it was a dreadful dream. I found her under a pile of rocks. Yes. Yes. Under a pile of rocks. Isn't that dreadful? Well, I don't know. Oh, yes, of course, Nan knows about it. She's right here. Well, it looks very strange. You'll have to admit that. I'm the last one to cause trouble. But how do we know it isn't true? Worry about something. What's going on? But you ordered them, Mrs. Hodges. I see. Well, if you've changed your mind, there's nothing much I can do about it, is there? long before you'd be around? Well, this isn't my idea, Blake. You know what women are like once they get an idea in their head. Uh, mind if I sit down? Not at all. I suppose Nan's been talking to you, too. Oh, yeah, they they all been talking to me. Now, why in tarnation they have to pick a day like this to stir up trouble for me, I'll never know. I had an idea it was for me they were stirring up trouble. Oh, any kind of trouble means work for me. All right, now, Blake, what's this all about? Where is Patricia? She's away, and I'm not sure when she'll be back. Well, you better tell me where she is. That's the only way to quiet all this talk. I can't do that. Why not? Because it isn't anyone's business but my own. Now, whenever anyone disappears in this town, it is my business. It builds fast, doesn't it? A few days ago, it was just gossip. Now it's a fact. Nan's done her work well. But her sister, why shouldn't she be worried? It's only natural. It's even more natural than you think. I'm sorry, Sheriff. I know that you came in here to prevent trouble. Now, look, Blake, tell me where she is. I'll check on it and it won't go any further. The only way to stop talk. It's as simple as that. 
Stopping the talk won't change anything, even if you can, which I doubt. It won't change the fact that they were willing to crucify someone with nothing but gossip to go on. What kind of people are they? What are they made of? How do they manage to sleep at night? Well, they're just ordinary people. That means that they're easily led. And your uh, sister-in-law, <laughs> quite a leader. All right, Sheriff. Tell her I got a call for Patricia. She told me she had written to Nan herself. Nan ought to get the letter by tomorrow. Well, why didn't you tell me that in the first place? Oh, oh boy. I can hardly wait to see the expression on their faces. Well, they'd be disappointed. <laughs> I don't believe it. Now, oh, look here, Nan. Why should he lie? If that letter don't come tomorrow, what good will it do him? I'll tell you what good it'll do him. It gives him time to get out of town. What happens if he's not here tomorrow? If he wanted to run away, he could have done it long before this. Not if he thought he could bluff it through. Now, are you going to do something about this or not? Well, what can I do? It isn't as if there was a, well, any evidence. Very well. We'll do it without you. If the men in this town won't do anything about it, the women will. Just what is it you think you're going to do? Go to his house as soon as I can get everybody together. Maybe we'll have some evidence for you when we come back. You can't search a man's house without a warrant. We don't need a warrant. Not for just a friendly little visit. The garage was empty and so is the house. I told you it would be. He's gone. Well, if the house is empty, we can search it, Nan. We can and will, right now. Oh, but must we? Nan, I'm so afraid of what we may find. You can't search a man's house without a warrant. Now, I told you that. Try and stop it. Come on, girls. <laughs> for something? So you didn't run away after all. Disappointed, Nan? No. I'd much rather see you have to face it. You've never forgiven me, have you, Nan? All these years you've hidden it while you've waited for a chance to get back at me. I didn't hate you, Walter. I just didn't trust you. And I was right not to. Get out of here. Not until I find out what's happened to my sister. Sheriff, have you got a warrant for this search? Um. Well, no, not exactly. Then that's breaking and entering, and that gives me the right to protect my property. Now get out of here, all of you. Get out of here. Are you uh, looking for this? I'm not going until I search every room in this house. Get out of here. Hello, Walter. Nan. Are you all right? Of course. I, I was worried about you. I heard you were worried about me. I heard you were all worried about me. It was very silly. Wasn't it, Walter? Yes. Will you please go, Nan, and take your, your posse with you? All right. I'll take you back. This is where I came in. A long time ago. That's right. It's empty. There was a, a stage effect. I heard about what they were trying to do to you. Even 60 miles away, I heard about it. I had to... Come back and try and stop them. I see. Thank you. Very funny. You're thanking me. Why didn't you tell him? I couldn't. Still protecting me. Even now? No, Pat. Protecting myself. Protecting my own chance, no matter how little, that someday you'd come back to me.
So now you're going back to him? No, not to him. Just going. You have a right to know. It was awful. Humiliating. Cheap. I wasn't even in love with him. Where is he? I don't know. He laughed at me for coming here. He said vile things. You're all right, Pat. You're home now, and you'll stay. To what I did? Yes. It isn't enough for what I did. Pity isn't enough. No, Pat, but love is. You could still love me? Sure, Pat. But that's not the point. That's not why I kept quiet while Nan and the others built this terrible thing. I gambled, Pat, and I won. Gambled? I gambled on your loving me. On your coming back no matter how hard it was. I've forgotten there were people like you. You can look at something horrible. You find a crazy way to find something nice. Goodbye. You knew that I, that I lied for you. You knew that you were safe if you stayed away. You knew that I was in trouble, big trouble. But you came back. You've always run away, Pat. But this time you came back. It's different. You found out in the nasty way. But you found out. You loved me. You loved me. Yes. I love you. Isn't it a shame? I found out too late. Too late? Yes. Because of where I was. You got lost, Pat. You made a mistake. These people here tonight, they made one too, but I forgive them. Why not you, who I love? These people, they gossip. They never let us work things out. No, Pat, not after tonight. What about you? Could you ever really forget? Where, where I was. It worked once, when Nan said it couldn't. This time it'll work for good. What? Because you're someone who came from nowhere. Hello, you two. I hope I'm not intruding. I, uh... I decided I want to have those little bookends made after all. Oh, certainly, Mrs. Hodges. And uh, you know, I think I'd like to have the uh, two little lovebirds carved on them. Could you do that? Of course, Mrs. Hodges, anything you want. Be ready in about a week. Really? Thank you. Uh, goodbye, dear. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you. Hi, Sheriff. Hi, Joe. Hello, Mrs. Hodges. Hello, Joe. Lovebirds. Lovebirds. Oh, how appropriate.
So fingers were pointed and a posse formed. But perhaps it was predestined that the people of that town couldn't hurt this husband and wife. And we discovered with the visitor that this couple couldn't be hurt because they were protected by each other. Next week, once again, come and join the visitor.